Today we're banding together as like-minded individuals in order to save the planet in the next 20 years. Do you have what it takes? What's going on everyone? Welcome to Busy Dads Board Gaming. My name is Neil Odette and today I'm going to be reviewing Earth Rising published by Stop, Drop, and Roll Games who helped sponsor this video. So let's dive right into it. Earth Rising is a cooperative economic game for one to six players in which you take on the role of saving the planet over a period of 20 years. In Earth Rising, you'll play as one of six playable characters, such as the innovator, eco-investor, climatologist, and more. Not only do each of these characters have their own specific abilities, but they are also associated with a particular sector in the game giving them a slight advantage when working within that sector. Sectors in the game are based off of real-world human activities, such as politics, energy, industry, agriculture, infrastructure, and culture. Throughout the game, you'll work together with your friends to create new sustainable practices while attempting to disband unsustainable practices reduce the population in poverty, and reduce strain placed on the earth. However, it's not that simple. Not everyone wants to see the world change. The status quo, those who profit from the exploitation of our planet and people, will try to stop you. Every sustainable practice you've managed to implement will cause them to take further action against you meaning the better you do, the harder they strike back. You win if by the end of the 20th year, you've managed to flip all of the burdens into the center of the board through the use of sustainable practices. I break it down a little further in my overview video, which you can check out here or maybe over here. I'll also leave a link in the description below. So, Let's talk about the good and what I enjoyed about Earth Rising. But keep in mind that this is just a prototype and some things I like and some things I don't like could change from the filming of this video to the full release of the game. With that being said, let's talk theme. This was probably my main concern with the game when I first received it. I knew it was a game based on environmental conservation and although I'm by no means against conservation or being environmentally friendly, I was worried that the game would be more focused with teaching those aspects as opposed to just focusing on being a good game and a balanced one at that. Luckily, that is not at all the case here. For sure, this is a game about conservation and making the planet a better place to live for everyone through the use of sustainable and environmentally friendly practices. But it's much more than just that. First and foremost, the practices you'll come across throughout the game, both sustainable and unsustainable, are 100% based in the real world. As you progress throughout the game, disbanding unsustainable practices and creating new sustainable practices, you can't help but think to yourself, these are ideas, projects, and things of that nature that people in the real world are fighting to create right now. This is certainly a game for the 21st century. The playable characters all play an important role in the game and have their own specific set of abilities that tie well to the theme. For example, the innovator who is part of the industry sector has access to startup tokens and the more sustainable industry practice there are in play, the more startup tokens that character has to use. Startup tokens can be used to help your meeple uh, get out of poverty. So although you might not be able to create a new sustainable practice, on your turn, you can instead create startups for people in poverty as somewhat of a short-term plan. 
Not only do each of the playable characters bring something special to the table to aid in your journey to save the world, but as you play more and more, you'll quickly realize that some characters just work better together than others, depending on the player count. And at times, it might even be important, or at least beneficial, to seat players in a specific order, depending on the character they chose or drew at random. But I'll let you discover that on your own. Although this can be played solo, and up to six players, this is definitely a game that is far better the more people you have. After all, this is a game about saving the planet, and such a task shouldn't really be taken on alone. The only reason I say it's better with more people is, one, the communication aspect of the game, and two, each playable character is tied to a specific sector, making it easier for them to disband and create new practices. Communication is a very large part of this game. You'll constantly be talking with other players to find out what they might need for their turn coming. Not only that, but trying to balance the amount of strain on the board while still trying to create and disband practices and pass cards around to other players all come with a team decision and should be decided on by everyone at the table. Pretty much every step of this game seems to be designed in such a way to get people talking and working together because that's really your best chance at success. The gameplay in Earth Rising is surprisingly simple, but really fun and engaging for all players every step of the way. Despite the gameplay being somewhat simple, as I mentioned, it's actually incredibly satisfying when you can pull off a really good turn, which might see you creating a sustainable practice in your sector, doing a little cleanup of the strain, and flipping over minor or major burdens to the center of the table that subsequently will pull people out of poverty and reduce the amount of strain you would have received in the strain phase. That being said, it also works the other way too. So when you're hit with a status quo card, it might be frustrating to see all your hard work and planning come undone within a matter of seconds and can quickly begin to feel like a two steps forward, one step back sort of scenario. And as I mentioned previously, the better you're doing in the game, the more of an impact the status quo is likely to have, which can actually make for a really tense and fun game especially if you manage to pull off the W in the end. The overall length of the game sits around an hour, maybe an hour and a half mark if you're playing with six players. At no point did I feel as though the game was dragging on in any of my playthroughs. In fact, at times we found ourselves with only a turn or two left and wondered where the time had gone. And sometimes begged for more, as we realize that, barring any sort of miracle, we might not actually win this time. Now, let's talk about the not-so-great. As I mentioned, Earth Rising gets better and better with more and more players. Where it falls flat is Solo. This is a game about saving the planet, and although you're more than welcome to go at it alone, it's not the best experience as you have no one to work off of, bounce ideas off of, or anything like that. Not only that, the game makes no suggestion as to how you should play solo. Do you play with one character and try to win that way? Or for balancing, would it be better to play as multiple different characters at a time? The game doesn't really tell you. I've played a couple of times solo, and although it's doable, it can certainly be frustrating as much of the fun of the game comes from the fact players can pass along cards from their hands, setting up players with a solid turn. And many of the actions you take work really well in the sector you control, but not so much in other sectors. To be honest, the solo play is really the only big issue I have with the game. I have a few minor issues with some wording and components, but as this is just a prototype game, much of that is going to change anyway. All in all, 
I've really enjoyed my time with Earth Rising, with the exception of Solo. It's fun, simple to play, somewhat hard to master. The interactions between players is great. It doesn't drag on too long, and when you do manage to squeak out a victory, it's really satisfying. Also, I could see this being used for instructional purposes in schools to teach kids the basics about the environment and steps to take in order to build a more sustainable future. But there you have it. That was my review of Earth Rising. Earth Rising is coming to Kickstarter on April 26th, 2021. And not only that, but 50% of the profits will be donated to some great organizations. You can check out all the details about the campaign and their mission over at Stop, Drop, and Roll. Links for everything in the description below. Be sure to click that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified on any future videos. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Links for everything also below. But until next time, thanks for watching and happy gaming.